Let's go live. Let's go live. I can't believe it's Thursday already. Can you believe it's Thursday? Where did the where has the weeks gone? OMG. First of all, you know, normally when Beverly Hills was airing, we would have our Thursday live. Um, we, we haven't had that. There is a slowdown in Bravo content, which has given me an opportunity to get into shows like uh, Palm Royale, an Apple Plus uh, scripted show. I even got a chance to watch The Valley, like all the past episodes that I may have missed. It's not bad. It's not bad. And maybe because this is exactly what people hope for Vanderpump Rules, a level of growth, maturity, but still a little messy. We will talk about it. And we will talk about the latest episode of uh, Vanderpump Rules as well. But we also have a lot of hot topics from reality television to pop culture that we have to talk about. So, but shout out to our members. Today is a members only live chat. We do this at least once a month. Members here on the channel also get special content, updates, a lot of bonuses that, look, that's not necessarily listed in your membership, but shout out to all of our members. We have quite a few new members, so welcome to all of you guys. Of course, shout out to our Kings Guards holding us down on TikTok, here on YouTube. We appreciate them, so be sure to say hello and thank you to them. Mama Ali, if we can keep track of the timestamps or someone in the, ch in the chat, I know Mama Ali is here, but I don't want to always put it on Mama Ali, so... Anyone that can keep track of the timestamps for today's Thirsty Thursdays is much appreciated. And we have a special giveaway today from our friends over at Rose Forever. So stay locked. Don't think because we're going to do it at the top of the show. No, you have to be here. And we have more giveaways from Rose Forever up until Mother's Day. Because, look, a mother loves her roses. But why, did, you know, why wouldn't you get her roses that will last you at least a year? You see them behind me. For those that are listening, you can check it out on YouTube. Or check out our community tab. I showed you a little bit of the roses. I have a lot of roses from Rose Forever. But so so can you guys as well. We have discount codes and all that available in the description. But enough of that. Let's get into our Thirsty Thursdays. Let's start off with some of your good news. Be sure to let me know your good news in the live chat. And if you are watching uh, the replay of this, let me know your good news as well. Let's get into We have a lot to talk about today. Baby, baby, won't you listen to me? I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed I ain't no dancer Just got some hip in my feet Now throw your hands up Ooh, you bring the lighter I got the fuse You make a fire I'll add the fuel Follow my lead Just watch the shoes Gotta turn the heat up To get this cool Welcome back to the Kempire channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality, television, and so much more. As always, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like the video. If you're watching the replay, be sure to like the video and be sure to subscribe. It is a members only live chat for today. We don't do it all the time, but you know, shout out to our members. We appreciate you guys holding us, you know, holding us down on a monthly basis. Some of you have been members just this week. Some of you have been members for months. Some of you have been members for years. I don't take that lightly. So thank you to our members for supporting the channel any way that you can. But again, you can support. I understand not everybody has the coin. Okay. You can also support by telling a friend to tell a friend. You can also support by, um, you know, just liking the videos, commenting on the videos. All of that, all of that is support. Nicole says, my good news, I'm joining my work union to combat a lack of promoting black employees from the inside. Yes. Thank you, Nicole. All right. Asha says, my good news, my birthday's next week. Taurus. Taurus season starts this weekend and I am fully excited. I am fully excited. Oh, can we just, look, I, I, Okay, we'll start off with some good news because <laughs> that's how we normally start Tuesday Takeover with. So I want to start Thirsty Thursday with some good news. All right. 
We have some good news. You know, I've interviewed Brandy Norwood, you know, Brandy the singer, the actress, the all around talent. Uh, I've interviewed her multiple times. All right. So if you miss any of that, you can hear my interviews with her from on the Kempire Radio YouTube channel. So Brandy released a Christmas album. As you know, she has this new partnership with the actual uh, liquor, uh, Stella Rose. So she's been doing a lot of little private events and stuff like that. Sidebar, Brandy. Look, look, look. I was going to say something, but I'm going I'm to rephrase it. <laughs> I was going to be shady. Not towards Brandy, but the team. Y'all have these private events and people that know Brandy that could promote this, that could talk about this. Never knows about it. So whoever your publicist is. Because she had one here in New York a few months back. Nobody knew. And mind you, I know people that know Brandy closely. <laughs> and we tried to get Brandy on here on the show for, for the Christmas project. And that didn't happen either. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> I'm so shady. <laughs> I'm honest. I'll break that fourth wall. Keep my fourth wall in. But you know, I love me some Brandy. Because when I was doing Kempire Radio and we couldn't get celebrities to come on, Brandy came on. And we would like to talk to Brandy again. <laughs> but we love Brandy. <laughs> I say all that to say we love Brandy. And word on the street is Brandy's going to be coming out with some, uh, some new music. And Brandy came out with her, her project, her Christmas project, which we talked about and we promoted and we loved, okay? Well, apparently Brandy has just like this week gone back into the studio, okay? So I do want to just say congratulations. She said this in a, a recent interview. Let me just post this for you guys. You released, you released a, a Christmas, Christmas album this past holiday season. How did you feel about the reception to it? I love it. I love the fans that I have to support whatever I have coming out musically. They've been with me for so many years. So I was so happy to give them something that they've asked for mm -hmm. for a long time. Yes. And I saw in another piece, I think it was someone on your team that would just ask you some general questions that in this kind of season musically of your life, it's been a minute since you've been in practice of recording and singing. Would you say you're still in that space? Because your fans are always looking for new music. No, I'm not in that space anymore. Music is definitely now a part of my everyday. Nice. How is recording and singing and drills and all those things? I'm tomorrow. I'm excited about it. Okay, is it kind of like the beginning of a new Yes, thing? a new chapter. Oh. Absolutely. How do you feel stepping into a new chapter musically? It can be scary because you don't know which direction you want to go in, but I always depend and look forward to my passion leading the way. What's inspiring you right now? Mm, mm. And her daughter is in uh, Sarah is involved in music now. She's pursuing a musical career as well. And Sarah was on the Christmas album and she was on B7 as well. So look, you know, I love me some Brandy, regardless if we can never interview her again. I, that does, that's not going to change my love or support of the artist. I just I need the artist and her team to get it together. <laughs> so Brandy apparently is back in the studio, but Brandy's one of those artists. She's from that that time when they took their time with projects and, and time in between projects. So don't expect this new album to come out in 2024. I mean, I, I would be pleasantly surprised, but she's just starting this project, start fleshing it out. Uh, we might it might take four years. But it's fine. It's fine. One thing I can appreciate about Brandy is when she takes her time, you get quality albums. So take your time, Brandy. We look forward to it. And maybe one day, hopefully, we will speak again. <laughs> <laughs> What's your good news? What's your good news, everyone? Wait, hold on. We had some good news. Kay says, I am finally able to start Baby Girl in ABA therapy. Can't wait for her future. Happy Autism Awareness Month. And I know, I forgot. You, you would think I would remember. I mean, there's so many things happening in these months, but yes, Happy Autism Awareness Month. For those that don't even know, I had years before I got into corporate America, I worked in the world of developmental disabilities for a very long time, and I worked with children with autism and things like that. So it's definitely special and near to my heart. So Happy Autism Awareness Month. All right. Oh, and shout out to uh, Zach Peter. He's been talking about uh, his work in in the autism space as well for a very long time. All right. All right. 
<laughs> Nostalgic says, not four years. <laughs> so said, Sweet Cherry says, four years? Well, I'm just saying, I wouldn't be surprised because Brandy is a perfectionist when it comes to her music, all right? So it wouldn't shock me that it would take that long. However, look, don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath. And she might work on this, these new songs this week and be like, I don't like them. And they won't be a part of this new album. You just never know. She's in the beginning stages. She has a new um, contract, a new partnership with Motown Records. You know, the same record company <laughs> that Latasha Scott stole her sister's um, um, gospel project from. Allegedly. <laughs> Anyways. Um, hey, Ms. Esquire. Ms. Esquire says, good news for me is that the uh, T.S. album comes out tomorrow, and I'm excited. T.S.? Taylor Swift? Is that what you're referring to? Please, please let me know if that's what you're referring to. Exactly. Ms. Esquire says, um, Cowboy Carter took five years, and we didn't know she was working on it. Over five years, act actually. Over five years, Beyonce was working on it. So, uh, shout out to Beyonce. Her that Cowboy Carter is doing ex extremely well. Um, it's breaking records for it's breaking her own record. So congratulations to Beyonce. Congratulations to everyone. All right, that that's doing their passion and doing it well. All right. Oh yeah. Oh Sage. Sage says my good news is I finally found a therapist I really like. That is a process. I always tell you guys this when we talk about therapy. Um, Finding the right therapist is very much like finding the right partner. It's very much like finding your your the right doctor. It is a process, so don't get discouraged if you're finding a therapist and it doesn't work out or you feel uncomfortable with that therapist and you're like, I'm going to stick with this because this is what I... No, you have options. You definitely have options, so be sure to check that out. All right? Um, oh, Tiffany says, my good news, I'm on vacation in New York this week. That's fantastic. I mean, the weather could be better here in New York. I'm not sure if you're in New York City, but yeah, the weather could be better here in New York City. Oh, Miss Esquire says, yes, I'm a Swifty. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought, Miss Esquire? OMG. Okay. I mean, I like Taylor Swift music too. Don't get me look. Come on now. Y'all know, know I'm a fan. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. Some of y'all didn't even realize that was a Taylor Swift song. Y'all thought it was me. <laughs> All right. Yes. Ms. 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 Escoria says exactly, exactly that. You have to give a few sessions because sometimes the discomfort comes from being vulnerable. Yeah. Oh, look, I, I know I changed my therapist. <laughs> uh, anyways. All right. I love hearing your good news, guys. Replay crew as well. I want to know what your good news is of the week or of the, of the day. Some people don't ever take the time to actually realize that they have some good news. So be sure to share your good news. Um, black girl name at uh, Austin. Austin, right? Good news for me. Tour season is on the horizon. This is my time to shine. May 12th is approaching. May 11th is approaching. Hey, twin. <laughs> Where you been? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sidebar. Because it's Thirsty Thursdays, we can, can we talk about some thirsty news? I don't have the video footage because even if I had it, I couldn't play it because it's copyrighted. You know I love that song, Made, uh, Made For Me, right? Made For Me by um, Money Money Long, who I knew as Priscilla Renee from yesteryear. Go go watch um, our conversations with, with Priscilla Renee. That was that was her original name um, back back when, okay? <laughs> Foxy says, I thought it was you, Kempire. <laughs> Hey, I mean that is me singing. That 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 is me singing, but that's not my song. Um, um, blinking twice. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> Asha, Asha says, "Kempire's old therapist watching like this." I mean, that's part of the problem. Why are you watching my work? Just say it. But I tell you guys, this this is a process. This is definitely a process. Anyways, what was I saying before that, y'all? A money long. Oh, yeah, yeah. Made for me. Ratchet news. Oh, Elephant Brain. Who said that? What did she say that? You did. Okay. Elephant Brain is working. Um, so I recently saw, you know, just swiping through like Instagram and things like that. Someone performed. Well, the family was dancing to uh, Made for Me at, at a funeral. And let me tell you, normally that wouldn't be considered ratchet or you had to see the video because the dancing is what set me off. Because <laughs> I was like, what? They were just like, 
and then and then twerking and then and, and then twerking on the casket, y'all. Wait, wait, come on. Not twerking on the casket. I was like, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> All right, anyways. So th that's some ratchet news. You want to hear some other ratchet news? So originally, I, okay, TMZ's reporting this news. I was going to show you the photo, but I don't want to even show you the photo. Because, you know, community guidelines here on, but if you want to see the photo, I mean, it's blurred out. But let me tell you about this ratchet news before we get into some other stuff, okay? Because this story is insane. I'm just going to read the title to you. Shout out to our friends in, in Brazil that watch. Hey, Brazil. So TMZ, this is their title. Brazilian woman brings dead uncle to the bank. Yo, can we get a loan? Okay. They said a Brazilian woman tried to pull a weekend at Bernie's with her dead uncle, wheeling his body into her local bank and trying to take out a loan in his name, which she got busted. I want to show you guys the photo so bad I just can't. Like, I mean, he's blurred out, but still. Like, really? So Erica de Souza Vieira Nunez got caught on camera earlier this week in Rio de Janeiro. Sidebar. Do, did the person at the, the desk take this photo? Did the person at the desk take this photo? Because this is not, this is not um, camera footage from the bank. This is like a straight on photo. So they said she got caught on camera earlier this week in Rio de Janeiro where she appeared to have a corpse with her as she attempted to secure some financing about a $3,400 loan per reports. The video is super eerie, which we will not show you. Again, go to TMZ if you want to see it. As she tries to force, force her dead uncle to sign paperwork with his limp arm. I don't even want to ask what it smelled like. I don't want to even ask. Okay, so she's been talking to her dead uncle. At, wait, she's seen talking to her dead uncle at various points, asking him if he can hear her and if he's listening, instructing him to sign. Okay. Um, even though he's clearly not talking back. The woman also attempts to hold his head straight as it constantly tilts and falls back. This is like what we would see in an SNL skit or in Living Color skit. All right? And if you've seen Weekend at Bernie's, then you... I mean, that's a whole other thing. All right? Cute Potato on my TikTok says, cute, uh, disturbing isn't even the word. So employees at the banks... <laughs> the employees at the bank weren't convinced... Ultimately, ringing the police who arrested Erica, authorities confirmed that the victim's name is Paulo or Paolo, Paolo. I know Paulo, the way it's spelled. Paulo Roberto Braga. And he was dead for hours. Oh, wait. Oh, so this is so, so, so the smell didn't start yet, y'all. He was dead for hours before being wheeled into the bank on Tuesday. Girl, Erica may be charged with theft through fraud, embezzlement, as well as abuse of a corpse. Cops are trying to determine how this man died and if other members were involved. Damn, uh, poor, may he rest in peace. Sidebar, OJ Simpson, who we talked about on, on uh, Tuesday Takeover, has now been cremated. Just in case you wanted an update. <laughs> right? Just in case you wanted an update. All right, um, so I wanted to give you a little ratchet news at the beginning. All right, we got a little good news. We got a little ratchet news, okay? Let's move on. Let's move on. All right, you know what What I want to move on to before we get into some more um, news and things like that? I do have some more good news, and it's about more new music. So Rihanna, you know we love us some Rihanna over here. I don't, if you don't love Rihanna, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with you? I love me some Rihanna. Rihanna. Because, you know, we're straight shooters. It doesn't matter how much we love, we love you. What's been going on with Rihanna's wigs lately? What is it? Look, Rihanna is stunning. No one's going to take that away from Rihanna. But some of these wigs lately, I'm like, Rihanna, you are a billionaireess. And mind you, I will say this. Because I've been around a lot of rich people. 
just because you have money doesn't mean that you have taste <laughs> or style. Money can't buy your class. <laughs> Elegance is learned, my friend. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so was it are the funeral announcements over? <laughs> but what has been going on with the wigs lately, Rihanna? Anyways, so one of the last reports that we did, I believe it was on Tuesday Takeover, I was telling you guys that Rihanna basically in a new interview, in that interview, magazine interview, said that right now she's seeing the visuals before she hears the music, which made me believe, I was like, so there is no music? Has she not been, I mean, obviously she's recording, but it sounds as if whatever she's thinking of for this next project, there is no new music for it. However, in this new interview, Rihanna is saying, oh, she's got some music. Take a look at this clip. Just, they're just saying it. It's up to them. I already got stuff that I feel like I can make hits out of. Oh, yeah, really. Give me more. Me and Rocky are really like trying to figure out who's gonna use what. Really? Yeah, because it's so good. So I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna glean what I can from, from what she's saying here. There is no new music yet, y'all. Oh, sorry. I got your hopes up. I got your hopes up. <laughs> so, okay, see, Kay said that wig looked like a bird's nest. I love me some Rihanna, though, okay? But I, what I gleaned from this is basically she has demos of songs that possibly she could record. Or ASAP Rocky, you know, her 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 boyfriend and her best friend, her baby's father. <laughs> father. And I guess they're listening to tracks. So basically, I think she has ideas for songs. I think she's in that realm now. Again, very much like Brandy, I don't think you should expect this album in 2024. Maybe 2025. Maybe. But I've been telling you guys this. I'm not pressed for Rihanna to put out new music. She gave us music that we can still listen to. She gave us music album after album after album after album. I get it. But now there's so much pressure for her to release music. I don't know if she's put that pressure on herself in regards to like, oh my God, there's so much pressure now to release music. It's got to be a hit. I don't know. I think she still has a hit in her. She's very young. Uh, I think she's very, still very relevant. Um, and based on what she's saying in this new Entertainment Tonight interview, it sounds as if she has potentially new music that are hits. So good for Rihanna. So Rihanna's new music on the way, but not quite on the way. <sighs> um, the Closet Archive says, they're married now, by the way. We don't know that. That's, that has been a rumor. They have not confirmed that. It wouldn't shock me, though. It wouldn't shock me if they, if they were. That's been a rumor for a while now that, the, that they're married. She loves him. She loves her some ASAP Rocky. You know, before they were together, they were best friends. Apparently, they found their way to each other. Now they have two babies together. Good for them. Good for them. I'm happy for them. Um, yeah, congrats to, to Rihanna. And if you've been holding your breath on some Rihanna music, don't. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's move on. Okay, you know, we love to mix up a little bit. So I want to get into some, some television that I've been watching. All right. Before I get into Vanderpump Rules, before I get into The Valley, because I watch both. Okay. Um... I do want to talk about this new show. I told you, follow me on Twitter. I told you that I, I started watching this show and I'm invested. I'm hooked. And a new episode came out this week and I'm, I haven't watched it yet. So no spoilers in the chat. But let me tell you about the Palm Royale on Apple Plus. Just when I was about to cancel my Apple Plus, because like I don't watch anything on Apple Plus. And not because there isn't anything good on it. I hear so many good things about a bunch of different shows. I just get so caught up with all the other stuff that we watch and recap. But you know, I'm going to be moving away from um, all the other stuff. I'm not wasting my time on things that I'm, I don't find entertaining. But let me tell you about the Palm Royale. First of all, I don't know how, whatever the budget was, Apple fantastic job because the budget was budgeting and i don't mean budget like they have top tier oscar winning actors in this it is a mix of comedy mystery it is first of all the aesthetic the aesthetic of this show okay, speaking of aesthetic let me tell you something 52 never looked good on on anyone like um um 
Ricky, uh, Ricky Martin. Oh, <laughs> Ricky Martin. Um, they talk about him being in the closet during like it, we we have to remember this is a period piece. This is a period piece. Let me just read you um how they describe Palm Royale. All right, Kristen Wiig is a producer and she's also the star. All right, so um. Palm Royale, they say, is, is a tale of a woman who yearns for a place in 1969's high society, but which performance, um, but which performances bring this retro styled series to life. So they said, here are some of the major actors and cast members in Palm Royale. So, of course, Kristen Wiig plays the main character, Maxine Delacourt Simmons. All right. And basically, she's trying to she's she's like a scammer in a way. <laughs> OK, like Joanne, the scammer. She's scamming her way in. She's pawning off off her, not her mother in law, but her her auntie in law, <laughs> because it's her husband's aunt, played by um Carol Burnett, who is a legend. All right, let me say, do I have a picture of Carol Burnett? Wait, no. They, they was, uh, oh, where's my picture of Carol Burnett? Damn it! I know I have it here. Hold on, y'all. Let me pull up my picture of Carol Burnett because she looks fantastic in this as well. Oh, here it is. Oh, let me bring my my Carol Burnett picture. Carol Burnett looks amazing. And if you don't know who Carol Burnett is, who are you? <laughs> Look, who are you? First of all, she doesn't do a lot of talking in the in the series because she's supposedly a mute. At, for, at one point, she's unconscious, but then she's out of unconsciousness, but she can't speak, so she's nonverbal. And She's just comedy gold. If you know Carol Burnett, then you just know her level of comedy. It's still there. She's still stellar. It's a stellar cast. Like I said to you before, they're addressing real issues of the time. We're talking about Ricky Martin's character being in the closet and trying to find his way out of the closet. We are Kristen Wiig, Wig, as you know, is also very funny as well. So it's a mix of comedy, but there's also mystery in regards to the the main storyline, who shot, you know, who shot who, who's related to who, why this, why did this relationship not work? So there's, there's a lot happening. Again, it's scripted. For those that ask me, you know, do you watch scripted stuff? Yes, I love scripted stuff, especially when it's good. All right, especially when it's good. I think um, Palm Royale is fantastic. Palm Royale is fantastic. And it's a stellar cast. And not all the episodes are out. Episode 7 just came out this week. Oh, it's just so good. Like, I wish I could um, recap it, like, episode by episode, but I can't. Because I can't remember everything. (laughs) But it's good. It's filmed really well. The acting is superb. It's funny. But it also, like I said, it has that level of mystery. kind of reminds me of Desperate Housewives. Remember Desperate Housewives on ABC? It's not, like, exactly like that. But it has that level of of funny and comedy but also mystery and darkness and secrets and yeah it's really 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 good it's really really good so um escapist magazine continues Al, um we also have leslie bibb playing dinah donahue we have alice uh, alice and janney oscar winner uh, alice and janney um she she's playing evelyn rollins i love her in it ricky martin is playing robert diaz Ricky Martin just looks good. And and look, Ricky Martin's a fantastic actor too. But remember, he's he's been doing this since he was a kid. Um, and I'm just glad that Ricky Martin's out of that. You know, we covered that that nephew story that ended up not being true. The nephew was in a good place. Look, we have to address all the things, okay? But Ricky Martin has been on the promo trail um promoting this as well. I, I think he looks great. We don't really see a lot of Ricky Martin like acting. Um mostly I think right now he's on tour. He's on tour with like isn't he on tour with like Mark Anthony? Is it Mark Anthony? I know he's on tour with um, uh, Enrique Iglesias um, and someone else. Oh wait, no, I think it's Enrique Iglesias and um, what's the other guy's name? Oh, it's like on the tip of my tongue. You guys will let me know in the chat. Uh, so he's he's still a powerhouse in music, and now he's a part of this 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 all star cast. Fantastic, fantastic. So I enjoyed it. And yes, you you do get to see a moment of um of Ricky Martin in in his speedos a couple of times actually. Where's my Ricky Martin? Oh, here he goes. Looking f- fifty two years old, fifty two years old. Ricky Martin looking fantastic. That is Palm Royale. Palm Royale um is um available on Apple Plus TV. They're not paying me. 
But and, and Apple want to run me a check or just reimburse me for my Vision Pro. <laughs> no, they're not going to. Um, <laughs> Josh says, shake your bum bum. Yeah, every, but Julia says, everyone's, yes, everyone is on tour this summer. Everyone and their mama is on tour this summer. All right. So that is Palm Royale available on Apple Plus TV. Look, I know you're probably like, I do not need to buy another thing. Well, just buy it for the month. Watch it. And then, look, 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 look. I don't know how many episodes are going to be made available for Palm Royale. I know they're on episode seven, which was just released this week. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I just when I was gonna, just when I was about to cancel Apple Plus TV. And then all of you tell me I see loot also comes up on Apple Plus TV. I might have to watch that as well. All right, there's so much. I mean, luckily, the Bravo world right now is sort of has an absence of content, so I can actually get into some other shows. Speaking of the Bravo world, let's talk a little bit about uh, Vanderpump Rules and The Valley. All right, let me just talk about The Valley. I said this at the top. I'm going to say it again. I actually like The Valley. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and say everyone needs to go watch The Valley. But I did watch the first five episodes that are available right now. It's exactly what people are saying that they had hoped Vanderpump Rules would be. Because everyone says the Vanderpump Rules and the cast there are sort of stuck in the behavior of yesteryear. All right? And The Valley is the growth that people want to see from, from the folks on Vanderpump Rules. All right. So I have to say, I watched, um, I kind of watched with it, them playing in the background, but I'm fully aware of what was happening. You by now, if you're a fan of the Valley, then you already, you already know. You already know that, uh, was it Jesse and Michelle are divorcing? But if you watch the first five episodes, you're not surprised. Literally on last, uh, this week's episode, you could tell she's checked out. Do you think she cheated? Do you think he cheated? Based off of Jesse's personality, I think he's been cheated before. I think she's just done with him, Michelle. Sidebar, the, one of the other major storylines over the last few weeks on The Valley, because you know Kristen. Part of the reason why Kristen was let go of the Vanderpump Rules was because of her problematic behavior. Um, her and Stassi were fired for it, okay? I, which a lot of people say they're not watching the Valley because she's a part of it. Kristen has not changed. She's still kooky. She's still a troublemaker. Those last few episodes, it was all about Kristen relaying a game of telephone, relaying what she was told by Zach. You know, the one gay guy that's on the show. All right. And Zach says, yes, I told you something, but I never told you that Michelle was racist. I said, yes, she was Republican. You jumped you jumped and assumed that she was racist. Michelle was just sort of like, why would you say that I'm racist? I am um, Persian and I am Mexican. I mean, you could still be racist, but I'm not saying that you are. But Kristen, I believe produce, I believe she's a producer's puppet. I do believe she's a producer's puppet and she'll do anything to be back on television. I will say this though. I do like her relationship with Luke. Why am I, oh, I'm remembering the names. Look at me. Okay. I will say I like her relationship with Luke because Luke is, I, at first I thought Luke was sort of a balancing for her, but seeing him these last couple of episodes of the Valley, I'm sort of like, oh, you're just as messy because basically Luke has information. Oh, Sister Moose says Luke, who she met last week, who she's trying to have a baby with. I mean, at this point, I don't think Kristen's pregnant. Um, I don't know if this relationship is going to last. We've seen Kristen with so many different men over the years. Not saying anything's wrong with that, but we've seen her in and out of relationships. But she's at that point in her life where she wants to have children. Alala Chanel says, I don't trust Kristen. I don't trust her either, but she seemed pretty sure about what she had heard from Jasmine, the one black girl on the show. Um, and the one gay guy on the show, Zach. Look at, I can't believe I remember these names. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and Jax has not grown up at all. What I will say that I like about the Vanderpump Rules after show, it's like a mix of the Valley folks and, well, you know, people that were on Vanderpump Rules in the after show commentary. I was like, oh, look at that. And they're commenting on their experience on the Valley too. Stacey says, I like the Valley, but I can't stand Jax and Kristen, which makes me feel guilty watching it. 
I didn't feel guilty watching it, but they haven't changed. Kristen hasn't really changed. I know she likes a crystal or two, but that's that hasn't really changed her. <laughs> but Jax really hasn't changed. And as you know, Jax and Brittany, a lot of people have said that their separation, their recent separation, is all staged to promote the show. I don't know if if I believe that. I mean, Jax, if you've been watching Vanderpump Rules for years, we're surprised that they're even still together. Right? Anyone else? I'm surprised that they're still together. Do I think that Jax has cheated on Brittany? Well, if I didn't think so before, we find out this week that they haven't had sex in a month and a half. For those of you that are, are married with children, is that extremely long for you? Because the rest of the group, Nia, uh, anyone else like Nia? Nia is a former Miss USA. I like her and I like her relationship. I mean, she opened up this week about having postpartum depression. I like her. And then we got to see her, the baby. Oh, I was like, oh, do I want a baby? Do I want a baby? Nope. <laughs> but that be, I'll hold the baby for a minute. Woo, 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 baby. Woo, woo, woo. All right, now go back to your mama. <laughs> go back to your mama. I mean, that's what I do like seeing about the Valley because you do see the growth. You see these married couples. You see the children. It is definitely an evolution of Vanderpump Rules. And again, I could see Lala going there. Lala, don't walk, run. <laughs> don't walk, run to the Valley. Because I think you, no matter if people believe whether or not they think Lala has grown and you think it's performative, fine, go perform over at the Valley. <laughs> go perform over at the Valley. I think she would work. The only difference with Lala, though, is that fact that she doesn't have like a partner. But that's fine. She's still a mom. I mean, she can't film with Ocean, though. That's the only thing. But And then that's part of... Oh, damn. I just had a really dark thought. <laughs> I already told you how I feel about Lala um, having this baby on... I don't, I don't care that she's having it on her own. I, what I wonder is, is this a trauma response to what she's going through with Randall? And because she says, you know, with this child, no one can take this child from me. So it makes me wonder, is this a trauma response? And that makes me concerned, you know, having bringing a child into this world based off trauma. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And Sheena and Brock. Deborah says, Lala, Sheena and Brock. I could see Sheena and Brock going over there. I could. I don't think they're going to. Can I know some people think that they're going to cancel Vanderpump Rules. They're not. They're, they're season low. Shout out to TV Deeds they, that post the ratings for these shows. Their season low this week was 900 and something thousand live viewers. 900 and something thousand. They're not canceling, Van canceling Vanderpump Rules. But I do implore the production and producers and the network to do, there has to be a shakeup in this cast because people are going to check out next season. Yes, this season's it's all good, but next season is not going to be. We've already seen it with some of your other shows. But before I move on to Vanderpump Rules, I have to say, I, I enjoyed the Valley. Clearly, for the, again, I asked any of, any of you that are married, is a month and a half too long for a couple that not having sex? I think it's too long for Jax. I bet Jax may have not. Look, we're going to ask the question that they asked Karen on Real Housewives of Potomac. <laughs> when was the last time you had sex? <laughs> How many partners have you had, Jax, in the last year or the last month and a half? How, how many partners you jacked? I believe Brittany has been faithful. I also don't love the double standards with Jax. He's like, he can go get drunk, but he believes that that um Brittany can't get drunk. Why? Honestly, I'm I was always surprised that these two are still together. Uh, Mama Allie says I plead the fifth. No, we need people. You don't have to tell us your business, but I, I think it's important for couples that, to be transparent so that other couples don't feel like, oh, I'm alone. Because some other couples might say, well, yeah, sometimes, you know, a week goes by, you don't realize it, and then it's a month. I can't imagine that life, but then again, I'm different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not a woman who's given birth that has children running around. You know what I mean? So I can understand maybe a week or two going by, but a month and a half? Jax is still going out, hanging out. Jax has a history of cheating. Jax has a history of cheating. I don't see y'all. Who believes Jax has been faithful? 
in the last year of his his relationship with with Britney. I don't believe it. Who believes that? I believe Michelle's cheating. Apparently, Luke, which I think Luke, who's Kristen's boyfriend, and she's trying to have a baby with him. I believe that Luke, Luke was told by Kristen about Jesse and Michelle's relationship. I believe he was told by Kristen. Because at first I was like, how do you know? I think Michelle cheated on, on Jesse. I can't remember everyone's names, but I remember these, these problematic folks' names. Thank you, Rachel, for the uh, roses. We appreciate you on TikTok. <laughs> uh, see, Virgilia says, I don't and I don't watch. <laughs> well, if you know Vanderpump Rules, then you already know Jax's history. But I also believe that Michelle cheated on Jesse. And Jesse already told his friends, if she cheats on me, like I, that's like a, a deal breaker. But there's something about Jesse. He's very like, he's friends with with Jack, so they they're very like douche qualities. And I feel like he, I already felt like he cheated on her. He's great reality television. Don't get me wrong. Like he's a douche, him and Jax, but he is re reality television gold for them. Okay, because there's like two villains on this show, two husbands, but they're divorcing Jesse and Michelle. All right. Uh, Velda says that Jax is not attracted to Britney and turned off at her request. Again, part of me wonders why that these two were, were still together. I was actually surprised. Do you think that they may be, because some, some couples, I'm not saying that this is their, their, their situation, but some couples, and they don't have to share it with the world, and they don't share it with the world, certain couples, that they have an open relationship or a, yeah, you can cheat, just make sure I don't know about it. We were just talking about that with Mia Thornton and... And um, Gordon, he gave her permission to go out and cheat. Do you think that Brittany gave him permission to go out and cheat? For those that are just joining us, this is our Thirsty Thursday. We're talking about uh, the Vanderpump Rules spinoff, The Valley. Since we were talking about Lala and this new journey that she's on, as you know, Lala from Vanderpump Rules is pregnant. She is with child. All right. She is with child. Um. I will say this. At first, when they were talking about doing this sort of like sperm donor party, they do it at uh, Lisa Vanderpump's home. That was very nice of Lisa. <laughs> I thought this was actually cute. When they first mentioned it, I was like, this is weird. I was like, tell me y'all have nothing to talk about. Okay. Tell me you don't have anything rest for the season. But when they actually did it, it actually was kind of cool to watch and fun and lighthearted. And a little emotional. Not for me. For Lala. I thought it, I thought that was cute. So this episode, this week's episode of Vanderpump Rules, we are literally seeing the group react to the interview that Bethany Frankel did with um, Rachel. Rachel right now? I can never remember. It's Rachel Raquel. I know. She, no, she was Raquel. Now she's Rachel. Her, her original name. All right. So uh, Miss Kaiser says, Lala's pregnant. Where are you? Yeah, she made the announcement. We talked about it on Tuesday Takeover. We said, congrats, Lauren. Um, anyways. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, so they're reacting. Bethany Frankel is re Bethany's interview with, with um, Rachel is what the group is reacting to. I don't remember everything that came out from that interview, but I love the fact on the after show you know how they were, um, how Dr. Simone referred to Carlos King as the blogger? So now they're referring to um, Bethany Frankel as the podcaster. Podcaster. <laughs> Bethany's sharing a lot about her. Bethany has gone from the reality TV reckoning to now talking a lot about her divorce from Jason Hoppy. And then she's talking about this, her sex life with them. I saw that was a recent report today. We're not going to talk about that at all because I didn't get a chance to listen to it myself. But I thought that was interesting. So the, the cast this week are reacting in this week's episode of Vanderpump Rules to Rachel and what she's saying in this interview. Talking about how she never really was um, really close with, with Ariana. Ariana's like, really? But our Instagram says other. I don't believe everything on Instagram, though, Ariana. Sidebar, you know how we called the Hoarder's Paradise that is Ariana Maddox's room? So now the house, you know, that they're they're trying to figure out if she's going to be bought out from it, if he's going to sell it. 
Well, now I'm looking at you with the side act, Tom Sandoval, because one one moment you you wanting to sell to sell to her now because she quote took too long now you've changed your mind about possibly um buying her out and maybe just selling it i feel like there's more to the story i don't know if financially he really could not buy her out now he's thinking about selling it so that's part he's part of the reason why they were still under the same roof because ariana says that i i was ready to sell this i was already ready to sell this but this episode, we literally see that they are living in a squalor. Like, there are boxes everywhere, clothes everywhere, sitting on dining tables. Look, Ariana, I'm looking at you with the side eye. Yeah, we already knew that Tom was nasty, but we've seen your room up, up multiple times this season, and we were like, Ariana, girl. <laughs> but anyway, so the group including Tom Sandoval, are reacting to this interview that Rachel did with Bethany, the podcaster. And, you know, you know, Tom, I'm like, you know, I, 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 I thought that we could make it work. He really thought that he and Rachel were going to have a relationship after this, this affair. I have to get, look, I don't give Rachel a, a lot of credit. What I will give her credit, she could have easily been thirsty like the rest of them. And continued this relationship with Tom, been on this show, and maybe because she had her family there, probably saying, no, you're not going back there. And she comes from money, word on the street. I don't believe her net worth that you, know, that you see on social media. I don't believe that. I believe her family, that's her family's money. I believe it was her family that's, that stepped in and basically said, you're not going back. Um, you're not in love with this man. <laughs> Because you remember, even during the scandal of it all, she had like a, pu a publicist fishing all these stories and this narrative. And look, did I believe everything that Rachel has said in that interview and what she subsequently saying on her podcast? No, but I also don't believe them. I think they're all liars. <laughs> Lies, the lie. Especially Tom. He, he, Tom really thought that he was going to have some sort of relationship with Rachel. I believe that he wanted to have a relationship with her. I don't think that it was going to be a real relationship, like a healthy relationship. I think he really thought he had someone that he could control and manipulate. And I think he was blindsided that he, he could not manipulate her. He, he manipulated Ariana in a way, but Ariana also wasn't any sort of like dummy either. Not to say that Rachel's a dummy, but she, she's definitely, he thought, easily influenced. And he thought maybe that he could move on, very much like what he did with Ariana when he was with Kristen, move on on this show with, with Rachel. And she flipped the script on him. And I don't think he's used to that. I don't think he was ready for that. I don't think he was used to that. He was blind. So he got really emotional. He's like, I was in love with her. And then she said in this interview, she wasn't in love with him. And then I did not expect when, when James Kennedy went to the band rehearsal for Tom, I did not expect that they would end up fighting because because <laughs> James Kennedy's mouth is slick because he had all kinds of sideways things to say about Tom and his relationship with Rachel. And Rachel basically said that her relationship with Tom was just her way of getting over her relationship with James Kennedy. So they end up in, a, in, a, in an argument during this band rehearsal sidebar. That band rehearsal sounded like trash. I was like, what are we watching? <laughs> Also, you know what else is trash? Even though I will say this, the Apple song. Have you guys heard Sheena's uh, Apple song? I heard it and I was like, that's not bad. I remember when it came out. I haven't listened to it since. But <laughs> when I when it came out, I was like, this is kind of catchy. But the fact that we watch, we are watching Sheena Shea do a new version of Good As Gold 10 years later. Girl, but I get it. Sheena Shea wants to be on Dancing with the Stars. Sheena Shea is just a pick me. Like, you know, people love to say pick me, pick me, pick me um, to anyone. No, she is the walking definition. You look up the definition of pick me, you will see Sheena Shea. Okay, you will see Sheena Shea. Uh, but for me, the cutest part of this week's episode of Vanderpump Rules was this sort of like sperm donor party. I've never seen that ever before. Now that they've done this on this platform, you know more people are going to do it. Everyone's involving. Shout out to um, Allie. I told you, I don't think that Allie is, um, the show can't be built around Allie. 
But I like Allie. Allie, for me, is like a grounding force. I like her commentary. I know she's dating James Kennedy, but I'm not going to hold that against Allie. <laughs> I'm not. I love the fact that she's like, I need to know their charts. The, the sperm donors, I need to know their charts. <laughs> because she's, she, you, you know, we love to talk astrology here. She's like, I need to know at least their sun. No, I need to know more than their sun sign. I need to know their sun, their rising, and their moon. Because we always, we always tell you guys, you can't just base someone's personality just off of their their uh, sun sign. Their entire birth chart is what you really need. But you can't do that in the world of finding a sperm donor. All right? But I thought that scene, the, 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 the <laughs> Nicole says, what the F is a sperm donor party? <laughs> this is where your group of friends, now it's going to be a thing. This is where your group of friends come together and they help you select your sperm donor. Okay. And Julie says Allie is the best. I like Allie. I really like Allie. Uh, Foxy says Allie is not that into James, in my opinion. We've said that, though. We said that sometimes she looks at him and I'm like, oh, she doesn't like him. Sage says, and their Venus. You need to see their birth chart and how it, how it matches up with your birth chart. For those that missed it, I had a special episode with a Vedic astrologer, like not this last week, but might be the previous week. And she talked about that. So if you want a book to, to know your birth chart and understand your birth chart, you can do, do it with her. You could also do it with Femme Tarot, who we also did a recent collaboration with as well. Just saying you got options. Okay. Sophia says that Allie is so level-headed. What is um, Allie's sign? I know I probably have asked this before. If you guys can just let me know. <coughs> Excuse me. We got a couple of super chats. Let me take a sip of water from my coldest water bottle. Guys, if you're just joining us, this is our Thirsty Thursday, so I'm going to take a sip. Don't forget, we our discount code with coldest still is still available. Kempire 10 for 10% off. You can get coldest water bottles. You can get things for your pets. You can get sheets. You can get all kinds of stuff over at coldest.com. Again, Kempire 10 for 10% off. Speaking of sponsors, our friends over at Rose Forever is sponsoring today's live show. As you can see behind me, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you want roses that are affordable and that will last you at least a year, especially based off the price point, because sometimes you guys spend like a couple hundred dollars on roses that will last you maybe a week or two. All right. And if you're really good, maybe three weeks. Rose Forever Roses will last you at least a year. And with the discount code Kempire40, you get $40 off. Plus, you can use the discount code Kempire for worldwide shipping. Free worldwide shipping, most importantly. And today, we will be giving away one lucky winner of some roses. Right? Come on now. <laughs> Just not yet. <laughs> Just not yet. In a, in a few minutes. In a few minutes. Buckle up. Let me just say thank you because we got a couple of super chats. Hey, Rahina. Rahina says, Jax is, is, wait, Jax is a fool. But I'm married with, wait, I, but I'm married with a baby, one-year-old, longest time has been two weeks maybe. See? A month and a half. I don't know. I also, when, when she initially said it, when Brittany initially said it on the Valley, I was like, well, that's not that long. But then I said, if it was maybe like three months, maybe. I don't think a month and a half is that long. But you guys tell me. I, like, I want to hear from the heterosexual couples, okay, that have kids. Um, but also, all the gay couples that have kids. But what... what when is the long, how is the longest, <laughs> how much is the longest time that you've gone, gone without having sex with your partner? Okay. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. Joe, Joe says, will the members get to see you rehearse your debut song scissoring in Nashville before the actual show? Also, what is James GPA alley? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Look, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Joe, maybe, <laughs> Look, maybe I haven't, I haven't even, um, had time. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Shout out to our members that are, it is a members only live chat today. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right, moving on. Let me open up my notes because there's still a couple of stories that I want to talk about for our Thirsty Thursdays. And we will be having some Thirsty Callers um, at the end of our Thirsty Thursday live. You will have Thirsty 30 seconds to share your thoughts. All right. Only 30 seconds to share your thoughts on any of the topics that we are talking about. Was there anything else about Vanderpump Rules that I wanted to talk about? Nope. 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 That was it. Um, oh, Temi says, if you're traveling and both working, six weeks can be normal. 
Are Britney and Jax traveling? Maybe. Look, maybe. Maybe they are traveling. I, I don't know what their schedule is. I don't know what their schedule is. Maybe. Maybe. Um, Jasmine says, when I was with my ex, we went probably four to six months straight dry. <laughs> well, you did say ex. <laughs> was that part of the problem, Jasmine? Four to six months? Okay, now you're taking it too far. <laughs> Look, now you're taking it too far. All right, let's move over into some more uh, reality TV and pop culture news. I do want to talk about Siggy Flicker. You guys remember Siggy Flicker? Let me get a picture of Siggy Flicker because I just forgot to actually um, include it. Siggy Flicker used to be someone, you used to see her on uh, Real Housewives of New Jersey, but before that, she was very, very known to be on, even on the Wendy Williams show back in the day, just giving you life advice and things like that. Then she ended up doing... Real Housewives of New Jersey, and then after Real Housewives of New Jersey, people were just like, uh, I can't stand, stand, stand Siggy Flicker for her political views, okay? Um, and I, I, can, I don't even say her political views. It's her specific political views, okay? But now she's back in the news. Let me bring, let me bring up uh, this picture of Siggy. So TMZ is reporting in regards to Siggy Flicker and her son. So her son was arrested so Siggy Flicker's stepson, her stepson, sorry, her stepson um, was arrested and is now facing charges for his alleged role in the January 6th Capitol riot after authorities say his stepmom posted pics of him in the building. Damn. So this is your fault, Siggy. Let me read that again to you guys. So uh, Siggy Flicker's stepson was arrested this week. He's facing charges for his alleged role in the January 6th Capitol riot after authorities say his stepmom posted pics of him in the building. Okay. Let me see if I can even bring this picture over. So apparently she posted this on, on here. Let me see. Let me show it to you guys. Hold on. Let me, exhibit A, your honor. <laughs> Look, exhibit A, your Arna. So she posted this on her social, Siggy. All right? And mind you, this is this arrest is years in the making. He should have been arrested a long time ago. So Siggy posted this on her social, saying, I love Patriots so much. Stay safe, Tyler. We love you. So Tyler Campanella, the former Real Housewives of, of, of star stepson, was taken into custody in New York City Wednesday and booked on five misdemeanor charges, according to NBC News. The feds claim Capanella, let me show you the picture of him in the, in the building. Hold on. Damn. I can't believe that they're just getting to this man. Mind you, if he looked like someone else, y'all would have been arrested him. But anyways, I say all that to say. <laughs> so they say that they said the feds claim Capanella's stepmom posted pictures of him from inside the Capitol building alongside the caption. I love Patriots so much. Stay safe, Tyler. We love you. So um, on top of the pics of Tyler from the inside the building and NBC reports, it also received footage of Tyler walking in Nancy Pelosi's office during the riot. All right. This arrest is, how long ago was that? Trump was still president. Tyler's political views seem in lockstep with his stepmom, a, a noted Donald Trump, Donald Trump supporter who is friends with Alina Abba, a lawyer who represented Trump in the past. So hundreds of people have been charged for their role in the January 6, 2021, three years ago. A uh, riot at the Capitol building in Washington D.C. with some receiving ju receiving just a few days just a few days in jail, while others got year long sentences. Siggy Flicker herself has denied she was at the Capitol, despite some accusing her of being there that day. Siggy, as you know, started in the ma as a main cast member of the Real Housewives of Jersey for seasons se seven and eight. She left the show way back in 2018. She married Tyler's father in 2012. Um, according to TMZ, they reached out to Siggy, but no word back. You're not going to hear from Siggy. 
You're not going to hear from Siggy. Oh, Siggy. I remember seeing Siggy on the Wendy Williams show. And I was like, oh, I like her. And then, and, and on New Jersey, by her second season, she became very un, uh, unlikable. Uh, she was the one who brought uh, Margaret onto the show. Was I completely surprised at this news that her, her stepson was arrested and he was there on January 6th? No, I was more surprised that he wasn't arrested earlier. Three years in the making, they just arrested this man? All right. All right. No word on on how many years in prison he's facing. Probably none. <laughs> Look, probably none at this point. All right. So I wanted to report on that. So we, we did that. We can move on from the Siggy of the Soggy of it all. Okay. Um, let me move on. Let me. Oh, wait. Sidebar. Going back to the Ratchet News. Um, TMZ also got fo- footage of the Brazilian woman that went into the bank with her um with her dead uncle so they had video footage of her before hitting the bank rolling in this man into the car in a wheelchair all right girl what in the hell what in the hell all right in some other news we didn't include this in the good news but we should have ashanti and nelly are expecting their first child together So Ashanti officially made the announcement yesterday on her social media. She even debuted her baby bump. All right. She looks great. A lot of people said, girl, we already knew. Look, but she decided when and where she wanted to make the announcement. We also found out that um, Ashanti and Nelly are engaged. All right. So TMZ writes this. Ashanti's finally confirming what we've suspected for months. She and Nelly are indeed expecting a child together. On Wednesday, Ashanti posted a comedy skip skit on Instagram, which showed her momager, Tina Douglas, rushing her to the stage ahead of a concert at Barclays uh, Center. When Tina asked how much time she needed to get ready, Ashanti coyly replied, nine months. And also captioned the, the post, baby, 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 you know, like her hit song, and clearly wasn't referencing her 2002 hit. Uh, it was Nelly who first tipped off fans way back in December when he gleefully kept rubbing on Ashanti's belly. It wasn't hard for folks to connect the dots, but now they've made it official. The family news has been a long time coming. The couple initially started dating back in 2003. As you know, they have been social because back then they really did not claim each other like that. They kept their relationship very much on the low. In this new chapter of their relationship, mind you, I think they reconnected during one of the versus battles remember when he ran across the stage to go you know almost broke his neck to go say hello to her remember i think that's when it all started okay well tmz also had an update in regards to not only are nelly and ashanti expecting a baby together apparently they're also engaged so according to essence and shout out to ashanti and shout out to ashanti's publicist who i've known for a very long time hey michelle uh, for giving this exclusive news to a black platform. You know we've been talking about that. <laughs> so according to Essence, Nelly and Ashanti are also engaged. They're also engaged. Ashanti says, This new year of my life is such a blessing of love, hope, and anticipation. Motherhood is something that I have looked forward to and sharing this with my family, fiance, and loyal fans who have been so supportive of my career is an amazing experience. I know a lot of people have mixed reactions to Ashanti and Nelly reuniting. I don't care. <laughs> look, look, look. You like it. I love it. I don't get involved in people's relationships like that. I will provide commentary when it's, you know, necessary. But am I going to be butthurt over her getting back with, with, with a man that may be a cheater or was a cheater or cheated on her? I don't know. But you like it i love it she seems very happy this is her first child remember she grew she grew up pretty much in the industry so a lot of that stuff the stuff that you know a lot of people experience in their late 20s early 30s she sort of missed out on because she was pursuing her career so i'm happy for ashanti she's gonna get she's gonna get her husband and she's going to have a baby congratulations to ashanti she has been doing her career on her terms for, for a very long time so good for her I know, I know what's his name is, um, what's his name? The guy from Murder, not Ja Rule. (laughs) 
I can never think of these people's names. You know who I'm talking about. He is giving you punches in the air right now. He's just fighting himself. So mad and, and butthurt. Irv Gotti. Look at me in my brain. All right, brain. You might be a little delayed, but you remember. Okay, brain. <laughs> Irv Gotti, thank thank you, um, Gabs Gossip on TikTok. Irv Gotti, I know he's just like this. <laughs> I better stop doing that. Look, I have the shoulder thing still going on, but I know he's like <laughs> mad, <laughs> <laughs> mad. All right, congratulations, Ashanti. Congratulations. All right, uh, By says congratulations. Thank you guys, and it's it, on my YouTube channel. Yes, Irv Gotti. Irv Gotti's mad as hell. <laughs> IB says Irv with the nerve. Uh, there is a level of obsession with Irv and Ashanti. I don't know what that is, but I know he's mad as hell about this news. Congratulations, Ashanti. We're happy for you. We are happy for you. Um, you know who we are also happy for? In a way. In a way. Wendy Williams. So, Wendy Williams, as you know, we've been covering all the Wendy Williams stories for the last few years since she left her daytime talk show, The Wendy Williams Show, her divorce from Kelvin Hunter, a.k.a. Kevin Hunter. Well, the news came out yesterday. We did a separate video, so if you want full details, be sure to check that out. The news came out that Wendy Williams' guardian, yes, we are still looking at the guardian with the side eye. We are hoping that that will change, that the family will be Wendy's guardian, because right now the family does not have communication with Wendy. They don't know where she is. They have to wait for Wendy to call her, uh, for, for them to call them. Um, so we found out yesterday that Wendy's guardian, Sabrina Morrissey, who has been accused of baseless guardianships, before pursuing a baseless guardianship before just want to point that out well apparently she's accusing kevin hunter who's in litigation with wendy trying to get his spousal support his marital settlement agreement that's what it's officially called his marital settlement agreement apparently he was receiving over thirty-seven thousand dollars a month from wendy in his marital spousal ag agreement settlement agreement well, apparently, according to this marital uh, settlement agreement, if Wendy Williams, the salary that she had during signing this, remember she was a part of the Wendy Williams show at the time, she had stopped getting her full salary in October of 2021. My brain is on point today. The fact that I remember these details, <laughs> and I'm not even reading from anything right now. I'm giving myself credit because none of y'all will. <laughs> The fact that um, um, October of 2021, apparently, Wendy Williams stopped receiving her full salary from the Wendy Williams show. So those three months that Kelvin was being paid, because he says in court documents that payments stopped in January of 2022. But according to Sabrina Morrissey, um, so you were paid for October, November, and December, we want our money back. So $112,500 she wants back. So that she can get her salary, I'm sure. I'm not sure how much Sabrina's being paid to be the guardian. Sabrina, did you pay that tax debt that Wendy owes? Because, you know, you're supposed to be handling that stuff too. We reported on that as well. Did you pay that yet? Or maybe she wants to use the money from Kelvin. You're not going to get that money from Kelvin. Kelvin is... As, you, as I said to you before, he's trying to have his spousal, his uh, his, his support to be, um, <laughs> Chef Lorraine says, it's that AG1 campfire. <laughs> I even have it yet today. Normally I would have, but I forgot. But thank you for the reminder. Um, So he's trying to get that reinstated. The last we heard was that the judge dismissed them and told them to go into mediation. Well, the update that we provided for you guys yesterday was that mediation fell through. Mediation fell through. He says that he's been asking Sabrina Morrissey to provide the financials. Which part of me, like, I don't know who to trust in this situation. Because I don't trust Sabrina and I don't trust Kelvin. But my thing is, why wouldn't you provide the financials? Is it going to reveal of stuff that makes everyone concerned in regards to Wendy's financials and, and her money? So part of me is like, release the financials. So he's accusing her, her you know, Sabrina, of saying you're going to give us the financials but you've never given us the financials but sabrina says i got you one better i'm gonna sue you for money that you owe us or you owe wendy and we're going to ask for a gag order so you can't talk about this case 
I told you guys in the video that I did yesterday on this story, I will never understand or fathom how Kelvin Hunter, Kevin Hunter, Wendy Williams' ex-husband, managed her career when she was in radio and she made good money then. But then when she went to television, she made even better money. He was an executive producer, but he was also her manager. I don't know if he got a salary as an executive producer and um, 10 to 20% as the manager. I don't know if he got both. But apparently, and Wendy has said this, he loved those lavish cars and, and you know, all the things. Okay? I'm trying to understand where all of that money went because Kevin has said in these court documents that he has nothing. He depends on this $37,000 a month for his livelihood. Sir, you were with Wendy for almost, what, 25 years and you don't have a pot to hunt in? Nothing? What'd you do with all that money? You tricked out all that money? So much so he had to sell his mil million dollar home. He had to sell his million dollar home, selling off his trinkets. I will never understand it. I mean, I should understand it because plenty of people that make millions end up spending millions and have nothing. But I'm just sort of like, you managed her career. She still had millions. What happened to your millions? And now he got a, a new baby with, with the side chick. Apparently it's the new wife, allegedly. Well, maybe you get, like, I don't know if you can afford it, Calvin, but maybe you can get her some rolls forever. Mother's Day is right around the corner. You, you know, you got to get, 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 um, Sharina a little something. I can get you a little discount. Campire 40. And if you're in the chat, maybe you can win some. Get out the chat, Kelvin. <laughs> we, we, we want a real, uh, person that's a supporter here. All right. Just say it. All right, let's pick a winner. Let's pick a winner from Rose Forever. As you know, we love our friends over at Rose Forever. Fantastic sponsors here of the channel. We've collaborated with them multiple years at this point. We just did a collaboration with them on Valentine's Day. Rose Forever are roses that will last you at least a year. But they have a bunch of new products, including hydrangeas. They have candles. Don't you want roses that will last you a, a, a lifetime? For me, when you spend a couple of hundred dollars, in, and you can spend less over at Rose Forever, but I'm saying even if you spent a couple of hundred dollars on Rose Forever and you get $40 off with Kempire 40 and plus free worldwide shipping with the discount code Kempire. So you're not really spending that much. My thing is if those roses last you at least a year, it all, it all, you already got a, your money's worth. You already got your money's worth. That's why I love them. You know, I got some roses in, I got roses throughout my entire house, honestly, and I've given some away. That's how many roses I've gotten, okay? All right. Um, th shout out to Rose Forever for sponsoring today's live show. We always appreciate them. We love their roses. Look at their roses. Beautiful. Oh, wait, not that one. <laughs> let, me, let me bring it up. Look at these roses. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, 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 and affordable. Again, more information. Even if you don't win, you will have an opportunity um, to win in the future. We will be doing more Rose Forever giveaways before Mother's Day. And even if you order your Mother's Day roses now... You can go hide those suckers away and they will be fine until Mother's Day. That's how quality these roses are. All right? All right. More information on Rose Forever will be available in the description. Let's pick a winner, though, for today's giveaway. Come on now. Let's pick today's giveaway. All right. And shout out to our members. This is going to be for members. All right. Let me... If I can do it, Lord have mercy, Lord. All right, I'm not doing this. This is all through done through a system. I'm not picking and choosing anyone myself. This is all done through a system. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's do this. Let's do this. Shout out to all of our members again, guys. If you want to become a member of the channel, head on over to teamcampari.com backslash join. And if you didn't know already. Uh, we have our Boston show coming up. Kempire After Dark is coming to Boston May 30th. Then we will be in Nashville July 11th, Atlanta the next day, July 12th. And then we will be in Seattle on August 30th. And New York City, this is our first time announcing it here live. New York City, we're coming back to the Green Room 42. You can head on over to Green Room 42's website. Head on over to June 21st. 
We are coming back to the Green Room 42 to for a new, all new live show for the Campfire After Dark tour. So if you if you went to the first show, you already know it's based off of what's happening in the moment. So every show is very different. So what you saw in New York a few months ago is not going to be the same show you see uh, in New York come June 21st. All right. So get your tickets now if you haven't already. All right. Uh, I still got to make the link for it, but. Matter of fact, hold on. I can post the link. Hold on. Let me post the link. I have the link. I do have the link. Let me just post the link. Let me post the link. I will post the link in the live chat here. And for those that are watching on TikTok, you can get the link on YouTube as well. Um, but that's the link for the Green Room 42 show. All right. The time on there, we're still figuring out the time, but it will be that date. It will be that date. The time will probably be in that hour. <laughs> they're, they're still they're still figuring that out. But of course, we're coming back to New York. Uh, well, I live here in New York, but we're coming back to New York uh, at the Green Room 42 for Pride Month. All right. All right. So let's pick a winner for our Rose Forever giveaway. The first of how many? You never know. This is why you have to stay locked. You have to stay locked and be here. Let's pick a winner. Philly John. Congratulations. <laughs> Philly John is the winner. Philly John is the winner. Philly John is the winner. I met Philly John in Philly. <laughs> Shout out to Philly John. Congratulations, Philly John. Just email us um, at kempiredaily at gmail.com. That way we'll be able to pick you'll be able to pick out your roses and things like that. Congratulations to Philly John. And if you didn't win, don't worry. You can still win by buying your own roses. <laughs> Yeah, you can get your own roses. Again, the discount code is Kempire40 for $40 off plus Kempire for free worldwide shipping. But as I said to you guys before, I will be giving away more Rose Forever roses. So make sure you're here so you never miss out. You never know when we're going to do it. You never know. It might be during our next Summer House Martha's Vineyard recap. All right. Congratulations to Philly John. And shout out to Philly John. She is also one of our King's Guards and has been here since. I Philly John, how long have you been modding for us? I feel like since er, like early, early, okay? And Philly John is like one of the only mods that doesn't have a picture, but I've met her, so I know she's real <laughs> and normal. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, you know, some, you know, we, we, we have trolls that come through with that, with no pictures, but I've met Philly John, okay? <laughs> congratulations, Philly John, and congratulations to all of you that have been taking advantage of the Rose Forever discount code. All right, I still have a lot more to talk about. Are you guys ready? I know some of you are on lunch. Some of you have to leave. It's fine. It's fine. But I will be here. I have more to talk about. <laughs> I have a lot more to talk about. We got to talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot to, talk, to unpack in regards to the Real Housewives of Potomac. But I will say this. Shout out to Candace. So Candace was on my friends over at the We We Sound Crazy podcast. All right, shout out to my to my friends over there at the We Sound Crazy podcast. They also had Candy on their podcast last week. This week they had Candace Diller Bassett. As you know, Candace has been on everyone's tongue this week because of the shakeup that's happening over at the Real Housewives of Potomac. Candace announced this week that she is with child at the time. I got some tea that they didn't know. Um, the the crew over there in regards to uh, We Sound Crazy podcast, they didn't know that she was pregnant. They said she didn't even look pregnant. I was like, oh. All right. But I, I will say this about Candace. She was very, very likable. It made me say to myself, I could see Candace having a career outside of the acting and the singing and maybe doing commentary, a podcast or maybe a daytime talk show, like being a part of like a, you know, like a like a, a cast of folks. Honestly, um, Dr. Wendy, why don't you bring Candace on your um your daytime talk show here on YouTube? I, I would want to see that because I feel like she can she can talk about a variety of different things. And I liked hearing her talk about music. I listened to the the new interview with um, the We Sound Crazy podcast and Candace came out earlier today. I have a clip because she talks about reality television and the toxicity of reality television. So I wanted you, Maz, if we can link people to uh, the um, episode in the chat, that would be fantastic. Thank you. I forgot to link it in the description. But um, take a listen to this. Good question. Um, Let's keep it real. 
Oh God. Uh, uh, a nightmare. Really? Mm. Just crazy. It's not what I thought you were gonna say at all. What, what did you think, think I was gonna say? I mean, I thought you said. I thought, thought you said overall it was good. I mean, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like, mean, overall, yeah. but you know, it was reality TV is is ghetto. It's raggedy. Mm. It's very, it's, it's very interesting. interesting. It's, I, I would do it again, okay. um, because, because of what I've been able to accomplish because of it. Because of it. Mm-hmm. But I also like want to keep my edges. So it's, it all. it's hard to like keep your edges and thrive consistently. Mm. Do you think there's a way to do reality TV without it being ghetto or like? All of the craziness that happens that tends to draw people in. Not if you want to be successful. Mm -hmm. To be successful in reality TV, you are sacrificing edges, your soul, Mm -hmm. your mental health, your privacy, autonomy over every space. Um, It's for it to be good. You can do like toddlers and tiaras <laughs> <laughs> and that's cool or like even like the cooking shows yeah, 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 yeah. but like the crux of reality like the escape that everybody looks for that is gonna take you out yes yeah. so, and it's going to be a train wreck so for you're, sure you you left the real houses of the potomac do you feel like there is and and, and strategically so do you feel like there's a window where like you can do it but get out here before you totally just um, is there, is there it's, a reason why it's you very it? rare. I was literally talking about this with Chris in the car um, this morning. You are either humiliated and pushed out, or you have a very like small opportune window to get out. Mm. In it, and nobody does it. Candy has done it well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Cynthia did it well. I know no one else. Out of all of them? Yeah, you think about it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they were, everybody was, you know, shamed, embarrassed, yeah. pushed out, canceled, canceled, yeah. um, you just scraping the bottom of the barrel yeah. on their way out. There's no glory in leaving. There's very little glory in leaving. It's really hard to do. Hmm. I thought that, I, for me, there, there's so many fantastic moments that happen in this conversation with our friends over at We Sound Crazy uh, podcast, along with Candace Diller Bassett. She is their guest this week. There are a lot of really great moments where she talks about music and her experience there. Um, but to me, in, in regards to what we talk about here for our Thirsty Thursday, I thought that was in- interesting be- because a lot of people want to say, oh, she was fired. She was, you know, that's what, what happens. And yes, a lot of times, when we hear these folks say, I'm taking a break or um, I decided not to come back, a lot of times it was because their contract wasn't renewed or the contract that, that you were offered was like a lowball offer. Um, I don't believe that with Candace. Candace, as you know, did a recent interview with Entertainment Tonight and revealed that, you know, that she's pregnant and that 95% of why she decided not to come back was because she was pregnant. And she, based off what she's saying in this interview, before she even revealed that she was pregnant to the world, it sounded as if she's like, yeah, offering um, herself on this reality show while she's in this space of pregnancy, she was not, she was not going to even consider doing. Okay. Um, Speaking of which, Andy Cohen, as you know, reacted this week on his radio, Andy, in regards to a lot of the Bravo news. As you know, this week, we found out that regular Robin, (laughs) regular Robin's not coming back. She admits that she was fired. We also found out that Crystal Kong Minkoff mentioned that she was fired as well. Okay, that her contract wasn't renewed. So this is what Andy Cohen had to say in regards to all of the Bravo news of this week. When When we we talked talked about about her leaving the show, she confided that she was pregnant and it was a huge week for Bravo Bravo news. Very happy for Candace's pregnancy news. She's 13 weeks, she announced this week. When we talked about her leaving the show, she confided that she was pregnant and I was so excited. And... I just think it's great. It's it's great. I'm very happy for them. This is this is wonderful. Rebecca Minkoff is going to join the Housewives of New York City. Is that correct? Can you confirm or deny? Or is she just a friend of right now? She's been filming. What's the deal? I can't say anything. 
Yeah. All right. Well, everyone from one source, one source was like, "Oh, she's confirmed. She's on the show." The other one was like, "She's just been filming. We'll see." I didn't realize she's a Scientologist. That's fun. Not fun. Um, so I'll keep my eye out for anything else and keep asking when you can say something. Uh, let's. Oh, can I just say one more thing about yeah. Housewives news? Yeah. Um. I, I thought, thought Crystal's, Crystal's announcement that she wasn't coming back, back it was yeah. so, first, first of all, I mean, she looked like best ever. ever. But, but second, second of all, it was just so eloquent and classy, I thought. I just, I was like, wow, that's, that's the way, way to do it. it. I, just I just thought, thought it was great. great. Interesting. So mind you, we've, we've had recent news about Housewives of Leaving. So the fact that he pointed out that Crystal's way of doing it was elegant and classy, which I'm not going to say that it wasn't, but there really wasn't anything special or different than what other housewives have said and done before. Right? I was just like, and I don't know. I do I do believe that Andy is upset, or maybe a little perturbed, that Candace is not going to share her pregnancy or this next chapter of her life. On, on the Real Housewives of Potomac, especially right now when they everything on Potomac seems like it's up in the air, including NECA's position on the show. Okay, let me just talk about that. So NECA has done a couple of different interviews, and I have not watched one full interview of it. I've only seen clips. I'm not going to sit there. NECA, you've been fired, or haven't you? Come on, girl, just admit it. <laughs> NECA was recently photographed with Dr. Alicia and um, Sweet Tea. Remember, she said on the Real Housewives um reunion that they were considering her for married to medicine so clearly it's very clear that NECA wants to be on reality television but at this point based off what we've seen of NECA in interviews and on Real Housewives of Potomac I'm not interested in NECA coming on on married to medicine because when I know your intention is to be a reality tv star and I know Carlos King talked about he did a reality show or he was working on a reality show with NECA and a few other people as well I don't like the way you talk to Ike. I don't want to see it. And normally I'm like, you know, maybe give her another chance. I don't want to see you on Married to Medicine. I barely want to see Phaedra come back. All right? On Married to Medicine and her and whatever that is. Even though you technically are more qualified to be on Married to Medicine than, than Phaedra. Not technically. You are. However, she has been very interesting in her responses and on whether or not that she's coming back so she did an interview with the shade room she was recently on another platform talking about this watch this listen to this you know that she's not going to be returning robin's not going to be returning do we know about you are you going to be returning for the ninth season you guys have to follow me you guys have to follow me I hell have so no much going on and some announcements will be coming out so follow me please oh. Some real fun announcements too. Anything that you can share with us right now for those watching right now? Well, what I can share for those watching, follow me. <laughs> I follow you, follow me. No, I'm really follow me. Follow me. We barely wanted to watch you on the show. Why are we going to follow you? So here's the thing. As you know, we've heard reports. I've heard some reports too. So we've you've seen probably on the blogs that NECA has been fired. She has not confirmed that yet. I've heard from sources close to the situation that she's been fired as well. But now I'm wondering if she's trying to spin this into maybe moving over to Married to Medicine. Girl, they don't need you over there. I don't even know if they have you, have you enough in the budget, especially with Phaedra being there. If she comes out and announces that she's been fired or she's not coming back, then I'm going to be like, girl, so all of this lying that you've been doing in these interviews. All right, take a look at this interview that she did with The Shade Room because this was interesting. Fair. Are, are you, you returning, returning next season? season? I think that you are. I saw a, a, a what do you call it? A, a poster <laughs> where, where, where it says you're you're returning. Has that been confirmed? I think you know now is the time that they kind of get all these things together, and yeah. I think announcements will be made and decisions will be made soon. Do you know if you're returning? We don't know these things. Isn't that crazy? Are you sure? What do you mean? Like, Pause. Like, okay. I like the fact that she asked that question. She was like, "Are you sure?" Because I think she also sensed, like, are you not? Also, let's let's be real. The shade room also has their sources and in, in, in information as well. And I'm thinking she probably knows something here. <laughs> she knows. She probably knows what I know. We see each other, okay? Like, what are you doing here? Like, what is the narrative that you're trying to spin here, girl? If you don't just let people know you're not coming back to the Real Housewives of Potomac. 
Let me just rewind that part back. <laughs> Let me just rewind that part back. You're, you're returning. Has that been confirmed? I think, you know, now is the time that they kind of get all these things together. And yeah. I think announcements will be made and decisions will be made soon. Do you know if you're returning? We don't know these things. Isn't that crazy? Are you sure? <laughs> what do you mean, I'm sure? Like, is, or is that like the political thing to say until there's like an announcement? I think everyone in the housewives world knows that like after the reunion is when deliberations and stuff. Yeah. Start. So we we've heard, or at least it's been said that Candace is returning and Robin isn't returning. Can you speak to that? I know that Candace doesn't want to come back, and yeah. she's made the decision to pursue other things in her life. I think. We all can tell that she's lying. And a lot of you, someone in my TikTok just said, the Shade Room has the interview pin. When they do ever pin stuff, when do they ever pin stuff? It's giving paid. A lot of people have been saying that. A lot of have people have say, saying that. NECA, just, just bow out gracefully. What's up with these new housewives being this way when they when they are let go? Look at um, Eight and a Half fighting with a parody account of Crystal Kong Minkoff. Oh, y'all see that? <laughs> She's sitting there fighting with a parody account. Crystal uh, went off of Twitter because they were being racist towards her on Twitter. So she's not on Twitter anymore. Eight and a half is fighting with a fake account on Twitter. They're going out so sad. Like, bow out gracefully. But now it makes me wonder if she's trying to work her way into the married to medicine space. We don't want it, Bravo. We don't want it. We don't want to see it. And we already know goodbye, NECA. All right. <clears throat> uh, Tammy says that NECA's spending her good money on PR. Oh, she is. She is. She definitely is. Because she's been on a bunch of different um, interviews this, this week alone. All right. Was that the only thing that I wanted to mention to you in regards to this? I, if you are a member of the channel, shout out to our senior royals and our royal court members. I've already posted the call-in link on the community tab here on YouTube. So be sure to check it out there. If you're a Team Kempire member, we're going to drop the call-in link for you in a minute. So be sure to check that out there. All right. There's one more story that I want to talk about in just a second. All right. There's one more story that I want to talk about, and I'll get to it in a second. Hold on. Let me just pull up the article first. Because I had it open. Oh, speaking of which, congratulations to um, our girl, Garcelle. All right. I just opened Instagram and I saw this. Deadlines reporting Garcelle Bouvet to EP3 new Lifetime original movies, including Terry McMillan presents title. Congratulations, Garcelle. Garcelle has stayed booked and busy. She's not relying just on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills check either. All right. So congratulations to Garcelle. All right. Um, and, and you... <sighs> Eight and a half had a lot to say about Garcelle in her most recent rants. I don't know what's wrong with these folks. I don't know what's wrong with these folks. Hold on. Let me, um, sidebar. There's a lot of, um, Diddy related, like conspiracy theory stories coming out. You know, we don't uh, cover conspiracy theories a lot. Like we'll dabble once we have like more information, but there's a lot of conspiracy theory stories coming out. All right. Um, I even saw, what was it? Ed, Eddie Griffin, the comedian came out, came out with something as well, but no, I want to talk about something else. You remember shine the rapper? Allegedly the fall guy. Well, not allegedly shine. is literally saying it himself. All right. We're going to get to that in just a second. Once, once I can um, pull up the article, hold on. Where is the article? <clears throat> it was over. Here it is. Okay. So let me just show you this clip of a recent interview that Shine um, basically says that he was the fall guy in that uh, 1999 club pow, 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 where a woman who's recently been doing interviews and recently went on TikTok. We did a separate video talking about this. So if you missed it, we talk about all of those details that she is telling. And she says Diddy was the one that pow, pow, powed her in the face. And she's also saying that she's willing, mind you, the, the bullet is still there. And she said she's willing to have it taken out in order to prove her case. Oh, all right. Let me just read this to you before I show you this clip. So our friends over at the Neighborhood Talk write this. They said, neighbors, it's no secret that the allegations um, concerning 
Diddy have opened new and old wounds. We previously reported about uh, Natanya Rubin, who alleges that Sean Diddy Combs shot her at a New York club in 1999. Diddy, J-Lo, and Jamal Shine Barrow were all arrested in connection to the Pow Pow Pow. But only Shine was charged. He served nine years in prison and has always maintained his innocence. It's important to note that Ruben also always alleged it was Diddy who pow pow powed her. So well after hearing that Ruben uh, stated last month that she'd be willing to have the uh, bullet fragments removed from her face to prove Diddy is the one who did it, and Little Rod, who is suing Diddy for a, pl- a plethora of things, claimed Diddy, Diddy admitted to the pow pow pow. Shine is speaking out and says that this has been the truth all along. So during an interview with Seven News Belize, because as you know, he's in Belize, he's, he's in political office over there in Belize. He's also originally from Belize. So a lot of people are hearing his accent and they're like, did he always have an accent? Yeah. Yeah. So Shine shared his thoughts on Little Rod's lawsuit. He says that the gentleman confessed to, to the pow, 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 and that that. And that is what stands out to me the most because, you know, I've done my best to put put it behind me and move forward. And so but it certainly reopens the wounds that I've been saying this all along. Everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy. Shine says a young man, he chose not to snitch. And he said he, he says as a young man, he chose not to snitch and doesn't need to snitch today because the victim is telling you exactly who did it to her. He says, I'm just saying that I maintain my innocence all this time. I said I was defending myself. I didn't get into who did what. But the victim is telling you who did what. And another, I understand that there are other witnesses, including J-Lo. Take a look at this clip where he, he reiterates this. In those accusations, he says that the gentleman confessed to the shooting. And that is what stands out to me the most because, you know, I done my best to put it behind me and to move forward uh, and so um, but it certainly reopens the wounds that I've been saying this all along everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy everyone knew that I was a young kid that took the falls until I got court and never really pointed the finger at yes but what so what I'm saying is that was a decision that I made as a young man I'm not going back on that I'm not about to point the finger, no, I'm not going to get into that. Um, but the victim is telling you who did what. And another, I, I understand that there are other witnesses. Is she, is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that. Mm. So some people in the comment section are pointing out a couple of things. So there were rumors that Shine took the fall for Diddy, allegedly, for this 1999 club, Pow Pow Pow. And he allegedly received $1 million in order to take the fall. That's, this, this is what the streets have been saying for years. I'm not saying that, that it's true. Again, Shine ended up taking the fall for it, served nine years in prison, and then he was deported. Okay? Ms. Esquire says, uh, Shine, Shine was so young when this happened. I'm so proud of how he has rebuilt his life. He's a respected politician in Belize. I added the Belize part. So it's interesting to hear Shine say this now, but as the article said, he has always maintained his innocence over the years. Other people have also pointed out, well, if he's saying that he was a fall guy and subsequently saying that the victim has named who who did it to her well she's saying that diddy is the one who did it to her people are also pointing out shine's hypocrisy because shine recently i think it was one of those award shows i think it was the vmas where he performed he went on stage in a full-blown suit politician shine and performed his hit song with diddy so some people are wondering what what is going on so look there are all kinds of things, as I said to you before, Eddie Griffin in a new video. Do I have the video here? Maybe I'll play a little bit of clip. Since we're talking about Diddy, I might as well just mention it all. <laughs> mention it all, right? Look, right? Let me pull this up. Hold on, y'all. 
And I still have to mention one other one other story before we get to the callers. If you remember the channel, we have posted the call in link um, on the community tab. Where is the? Uh, this is why I'm mad when I never save things properly. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on, y'all. Bear with me. Bear with me. Hold on. Oh, I was about to say, what is going on here? Let me see. Where is it? I just had it. Oh, it's like the Lord doesn't want me to play the clip. I know it was here. I know I'm just probably missing it. I just want to see if I can find it. Maybe I can find it on on the Twitter. Arg. Where is it? Hold on, y'all. I just want to play this for you guys since we're talking about the ditty of it all. Hold on. Let me see if, I, if it will come up. Yeah, parody. Oh, I know why. I was on the wrong page. Let me play this for you guys. Hold on. See, Universal Music Group. What's this motherfucker's name? See, see, he's uh, put Diddy up, and, and they, 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 they sacrificing Diddy. They, they, they said, nigga, you gotta take this shit, cause we ain't, we, we, we can't be involved. But Diddy's smart. He filmed every fuck session, so he was fucking Clive and the motherfucking freak boy that run the. Uh... Pause, cause that's a lot of cussing from Eddie Griffin. So what, what this article from the Jasmine brand? They're the ones who had it. That Eddie Griffin is saying that Diddy's house raids were, quote, staged and believes that Clive Davis and UMG are behind them. So that is the current speculation that's going on right now on social media in regards to the whole Diddy situation. But this situation with Shine, I'm actually surprised that Shine is even speaking on it because of the allegations that Shine possibly had taken $1 million to take the fall and serve nine years in prison. Do you think $1 million is worth nine years in prison? Well, back in 1999, maybe, maybe um, it would have been worth it. Maybe it would have been worth it. Kiara says, um, Bajillion says, Eddie Griffin needs to zip it. Um, Kiara says, hit play again. No, <laughs> I didn't realize how much profanity was in it. You know, when you listen to something, you don't think you think back like, oh, wait a minute. I don't know if I could play that on on uh, the YouTubes. Anyways, let me say thank you. If you are a member of the channel, we have posted the call in link on the community tab. We have a few callers backstage. Let me get into these super chats and then I'm going to get into our last story, which is Glorilla. Gosh, Joe, thank you for the super chat. Joe says, how long is too long for you, Kempire? I'm not in a relationship, sir. <laughs> and I know what you're talking about. But if I was in a relationship a month and a half, that might be too long. That's what, that's going back to our conversation about uh, the Valley and Brittany and Jax. Temi, thank you for the super chat. Temi says, and he didn't save or invest any of it. What a financial albatross in regards to um kelvin hunter my memory is great kelvin hunter and the wendy williams situation all right thank you for the super chat temmy julie thank you for the super, super chat julie says regarding wendy williams did the family go through the court to changing the conservatory or at the very least seeing her on a regular basis does lil kev see her we don't know those are all fantastic questions the last we heard after the documentary the family still uh, did not have direct access with Wendy unless Wendy Williams was calling them. So we have no update in regards to that. I wish we did, but we don't. But we don't. All right. Our last story, and then we're going to get some Thirsty Thursday 30-second conversation from our friends that are members on the channel. Again, um, if you are a member of the channel, you can get the link on the community tab here on YouTube. Shout out to our members. This is a members only live today. Uh, Candace says, and this is something Glorilla said recently in an interview. At the end of the day, the day got to end. <laughs> oh, Glorilla. And just when I was like getting into Glorilla and I was like, yeah, I like her. All right. So Glorilla, where is my Glorilla um, photo? If I could find it. Oh, here it is. Glow, mm, Glorilla. So Glorilla was arrested for a DUI on Tuesday morning. <laughs> on Tuesday morning, Glorilla was arrested for a DUI. Let me um actually 
send this other photo to myself because I want you guys to see her response to this because her response is quite telling and disturbing. Okay. All right. Let me just um, read the report in regards to Glorilla's uh, recent DUI arrest. All right. So our friends over at the Neighborhood Talk write this in regards to her arrest. Uh, they said, neighbors, it looks like Glorilla found herself in a little bit of trouble on Tuesday for suspicion of driving under the influence. All right. They said officers stopped the superstar originally for making an authorized U-turn at a red light. She was pulled over then. Authorities smelled alcohol and marijuana. Glorilla, Glorilla did admit to drinking that evening, but didn't disclose how much she had. The officers made her exit the vehicle and do a, sobri a field sobriety test, which she failed. During the exchange, an officer claims her breasts fell out and they had, they, wait, they had to notify her. Okay. Um, she was bonded out shortly after her arrest, according to TMZ. But here's the thing. After this news came out, Glorilla posted this on, on her uh, Instagram. I believe it was her Instagram, on, on her socials, all right? Oh, thank you, Mama Allie, about the Jeezy story. I thought I was about to say I, I missed something. Um, there's just so many stories to cover. It's just so many stories to cover. So Glorilla posted this on, on her social, on her Twitter, with an alcohol bottle on, on top of her, her, her head and her tongue sticking out. Like, really? Girl. Very much like what we've we've covered recently with the Karen Huger story. These folks are so lucky that they haven't hurt someone because they could be dealing with a lot serious, more serious charges. She's lucky she didn't hurt herself. And more, more than that, she's lucky she didn't hurt someone else. And she is someone that's on the rise. And I don't care how old she is. You still need to be responsible. You still do need to be responsible. <sighs> We will keep you guys posted in regards to um, the charges that, that she will face and in, in, in how that's being handled. But the fact, here's the thing. And Miss Esquire, you can weigh in, in on this. I don't know if Miss Esquire is backstage. I haven't looked. Well, Miss Esquire, get backstage. No, I'm playing, I'm playing Miss Esquire. I know you're busy. Um, I'm not sure what, um, what, what will happen, especially because of her posting what she posted after that information came out, if that will also affect the charges that she's facing with this, um, you know, driving under, you know, driving under the uh, influence of alcohol or suspicion of. <sighs> um, Tammy says she's 24, frontal lobe hasn't developed, but she needs to do better. I'm not going to use that as an excuse. I'm not going to use that as an excuse, especially her being a rich celebrity. And they don't have to be rich. You, We all have access. We all have access to... This is different than when I was a kid or when I was 24 years old, where, first of all, here in New York City, you'd be lucky if you could get a taxi. But now you have Uber, you have Lyft. There's so many options that you don't need to um, drive and drink or drink and drive. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Simone says, Kempire, don't expect much from someone who calls himself Glorilla. You all are making fantastic points, Okay. Maybe I just have hope for society. Trying. All right. So before we get to the callers, thank you, Mama Ali, for reminding us. We did have one more story that I wanted to talk about, and that is the Jeezy and Jeannie Mai situation. So the last we reported, Jeezy was seeking primary custody of the daughter that he shares with Jeannie Mai. As you know, they've had a contentious divorce. If you've missed any of our coverage, we've covered a lot in regards to this Jeannie Mai and Jeezy divorce. All right. And one of their primary issues right now is custody. At one point in this divorce, when she responded, when Jeannie responded to the to Jeezy's filing for divorce, he he's the one who filed. Allegedly, she was blindsided by the filing. One of the accusations that she wanted to point out, according to their prenup, if one person um, cheated in the relationship and cheating could be texting, it could be emotional cheating. And it basically, it seemed like she had proof of that as well. So she was accusing him of cheating in, in their divorce filing and her response to their divorce filing. So now it looks as if after Jeezy this week pursued primary custody within the court, he's now backtracking. 
So TMZ reports this. Jeezy is clearing the air on his bid for primary custody of his kid, now asking the judge to make sure that he and Jeannie each get their fair share of parental time. In a new motion obtained by TMZ, Jeezy claims his estranged wife is restricting his access to their daughter, two-year-old Monaco. The rapper says that he and Jeannie worked out an informal custody agreement last year, but that fell apart at the beginning of 2024. And he claims he barely seen Monaco this whole year. Jeezy says that they agreed to let him take Monaco for spring break from March 3rd to March 9th, but when he sent someone to pick pick up his daughter for another visit at the beginning of April she wasn't at home and he he wasn't at she wasn't at the home that he and Jeannie shared in fact Jeezy claims that Jeannie and Monaco have moved out of the home and he says often has no idea where the child is something he says violates their informal agreement he also claims regular FaceTime calls aren't possible because Jeannie's blocked his number why she block your number? Did she block your number because of back and forth arguments? Did she block your number when you filed for divorce? I need clarity. <laughs> so TMZ reminds us that, by the way, Jeezy also says that Jeannie's keeping, uh, claiming uh, his, his, his pow, pow, pow ownership, you know, those, is the reason she doesn't want her daughter seeing him, which he says isn't fair because he's always owned pow, pow, pows and has never put their daughter in harm's way. They said, remember, this all comes after Jeezy filed docs are asking the court for primary custody of Monaco, but sources close to him claim he's always wanted joint custody in the long term. Jeezy's asking for a hearing to hash out a temporary par uh, parenting schedule, one which will equal um, equally split time between the parents. Well, you know what? I think that they should. They should. That's the thing. When you have a contentious divorce, yes, do everything through the court. Do everything through the court. That way, at least it's on paper and you have a, a person that's an impartial person that will will be like, well, this is what you agreed on. Because what he's saying, according to Jeezy, they had a informal meeting that they dis discussed this amongst amongst themselves on how they wanted to handle this divorce. And custody, specifically the custody. So I don't see um, anything wrong with with this. I think the primary custody is what got everyone going. Like, what? Why are you seeking um, primary uh, custody of the child? Well, now it looks as if Jeezy's backtracking on that and will do joint custody, but he wants a a schedule. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Figure out a schedule. But I need to get to the bottom of why she blocked your number, Jeezy. And I'm not going to automatically believe just because you blindsided her allegedly with this divorce that she blocked you. I think something happened. I think, you know, of course, in court, we, we find out that you guys aren't getting along. But God only knows what those those back and forth conversations, those text conversations have been between Jeezy and Jeannie Mai. Did she text you? Hey, side dish. <gasps> <laughs> and if you know you know what i'm talking about <laughs> if you know you know what i'm talking about and honestly i would have blocked her if she said hey side dish i'm not saying that happened but you remember you remember that episode of the real where genie my um talked about that and then try to tr try to backtrack herself <laughs> Just asking for a friend. The friend is me. <laughs> Guys, if you're, if you're just joining us, this is our Thirsty Thursday. Uh, we're covering a variety of pop culture news along with some reality television and some reality television news. If you're part of the Replay crew, be sure to let us know your thoughts and opinions on some of what we've covered today or all of what we've covered today. And shout out to those of you that have become members today. It is a members only live chat. And if you're a member, we have dropped the call in link on the community tab here on YouTube. Shout out to those of you watching on TikTok. Dark meat on the side. They, do, do, I hope she, look, I hope she didn't send him a text message. Danny says dark meat on the side. I couldn't remember the ignorance that she said on that show. <laughs> I can't remember everything. Yeah, that's what this is what she said. She likes her dark meat on the side on the reel. She said that. Go back and watch the videos that we covered on the Jeannie Mai and Jeezy divorce. We covered that. We showed you the clip, all of it. All of this was everyone was reminded of some of the things that Jeannie Mai 
um, has said. Anyways. <sighs> We're going to continue. I didn't expect this divorce to be so messy, but here we are. Here we are. There's, unfortunately, they got to figure it out because they do have a small child that they have to co-parent together for at least the next 16 years. All right. All right. We're going to we're going to get into some uh, callers. Callers, you only have 30 seconds because it's Thirsty Thursday. So thirsty 30 seconds. All right. So please respect the timer so we can get to everyone and I can get out of here. All right. All right. All right. Let's get to some callers. Let me put up my. Um, let me see if I can put up my. Dis do I have my disclaimer here? Hold on, y'all. I want to put up my, yes, I do have my disclaimer. So let me put up my disclaimer. The opinions of the callers do not represent the opinions of myself, our sponsors, the Kemper LLC, Google, or Apple, or any of that. I don't know why I said Apple. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to some callers. All right. Uh, Tamara is backstage. Or Tamara. Hold on. Oh. Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Kemper? I only uh, have 30 seconds. Only 30 seconds. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. This Okay. Quickly. This 30 seconds is punishment for everybody who ever went over. Okay, anyway, ZZ, taking away uh, um, Jeannie's first born daughter or uh, full custody is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And he probably didn't want to pay child support. And after he blindsided her, really horrible. Oh, and Shine, taking the fall, fall for, um, for Diddy confirms how Diddy is, in, is intimidating. And it proves why people are not come have not come forward, and that's it. Thank you so much. Take care. Have good fun. You Bye. too. Bye. All right, we're gonna bring up next Dewan. Dewan, what's going on? Hey, what's up, Kimber? How you doing? I'm well. How are you? I um. Oh my gosh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh. I, I know that sucks. Oh, I think it was about oh with Glorilla really quickly. Yeah. Um. I, I, I feel for her, but she's only like 22 or whatever, so she'll probably just recover and bounce back from this. And there were like two other stories I wanted to mention. Oh, I, I don't know. I'll have to call back. That's the first time I've ever completely forgot. <laughs> it's okay. Look, I've been having it too. Must be something in the air. <laughs> <laughs> no. Call back in. To. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to bring up Kat next. Oh, wait. Let me start the time over. Hold on. Kat, what's going on? Hey, Kim Pyre. How are you? Oh, well, how are you? I'm okay. Let's make this quick. Okay. Um, Wendy conservatives got her living like a vagabond. Kevin, he's got what he deserved while he's trying to have Serena uh, make those little dry ass, I mean, dry tail pancakes. Jeannie Ma, she's getting what she deserved because if this man won't custody of his child, he asking for uh, not prime, not full custody, but primary. And you trying to stop him from seeing his child. Yeah. And you was married before, and you didn't want to get that man any kids, but now you're trying to keep this man from his kid. Um, Glorilla. She should have known better. She stole. She went to jail once before for stealing cereal. And if you're drinking and driving, you got money. You should hire somebody to drive you around. That's all. Points have been made. Look how you did that in 30 seconds. Wow, that was impressive. That was impressive, Cat. That was definitely impressive. Okay, Rain of uh, uh, April. Why well, y'all keep changing y'all names, making me confused? April, what's going on? <laughs> Sorry, I had that. So everybody in the chat can recognize me. Oh. Good afternoon, Kim Fire. Hey. So, Glover, look, do not play with my friends, okay? Because I'm still trying to see her and Meg on this tour. Don't play with it. Please stop it. Be more responsible. Uh, Jeezy and Jenny Mai, they both deserve each other because when you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Mm. Um, that Ziggy, Zagger, whoever she is, she's not smart either because you must don't like your family but hey again like i said when you do clownery the clown always comes back to bite and that was it have a great day wow with five seconds to go all right april thank you all right wendy's backstage let me bring up wendy next wendy what's go oh hold on chef lorraine hold on uh what's going on wendy hi okay so i'm from memphis glory was from memphis i'm gonna let you know you guys all Memphians do not talk like Glorilla. I know she said that at Tamara Hall, that everybody talks like that in Memphis. We do not. And then, Kempire, you must watch The Circle. The Circle is back for season six. It's funny. It has AI in it, so you will like it. All right, bye. Oh, <laughs> damn. All right. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Um, let me bring up Chef Lorraine now. Chef Lorraine, what's going on? Hello, darling. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing Okay. I don't have nothing to say about nothing you was talking about. Oh, I have a question. Okay. Charlotte, North Carolina, when you coming? I have no idea, but I, I hear you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
But as long as you hear me. I do. I do. Okay, I love you. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Take care. Have a good day, honey. You too. I know, Charlotte. Y'all been asking. I'm trying. Like, I'm trying. We had a meeting yesterday, though. Stay tuned. All right. Terrence Howard's wig, I think is what this says. Terrence Howard? Is that you? Hey, Kim. It's Rita. How are you? Hey, what's going on, Rita? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So, I have a story. Oh. Back in 2019, in South Africa, two sisters took um, their family members and a live body to the funeral pension fund because the funeral place refused to put out their claim. Mm. And this funeral place in South Africa is very, very well known for not paying people the money that they, they have invested with their company. Mm. So the sisters took the body there and were like, we're waiting for our money. You've been promising us nothing. And we're seeing nothing. Damn. <laughs> So that's you, the story. Do you guys remember Bye. the story when they took they took um that their dead relative to the club? <laughs> Y'all remember? Yeah, that? to the funeral place. It, they caught it on video. We saw everything from them taking out the body from the van and taking it into the building and then taking it out and putting it back in the van and driving off. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye, Rita. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Let me bring up Daph next. Daph, what's going on? Daph? I can't hear you, Daph. Daph, drop out and call back in. We're going to go back to Dewan and see if he got something to say. Hold on. Dewan? Hey, what's up, Kim? Can you hear me? I'm well. How are you? All right. So what I wanted to say was okay. FTCU, Nicki Minaj, remix drops tonight at midnight. I hope everybody listens. She just they just announced it. It's got Travis Scott, Chris Brown, and um Sexy Red on there. Oh. I went to see her in Atlanta and in Baltimore. The performances are so good. I encourage y'all to go to Gag City. And then what I wanted to also say is that Glorilla should learn from Karen. Karen Huger has been mute since that thing happened. She hasn't said a word, which leads me to believe her storyline next season is going to be all about that. Mm. And I think Neck is coming back because she's been on a press run. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And I my, my year anniversary just passed for being a member. Just quick housekeeping. And um so just celebrating that. It's been fun being with you. Thank you so much, Dewana. We appreciate your support. All right. Let's bring up Judgy Justice. Judgy Justice backstage. What's going on, Judgy Justice? What did you want to weigh in on on this thirsty Thursday? I wanted to weigh on the Jeezy and why do you sound, why do you sound all broken up? <laughs> I do? Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll call back in. Thank you. Because <laughs> it's, it's not like she's in a witness protection program. <laughs> all right. Let me bring up Daff again. What's Daff, are you there? Hey, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, um, one, I was just thinking earlier with the Trump story, I guess with everything going on with, with him in court and everything, maybe they're trying to see if they can catch all the other people that they didn't catch before to yeah. avoid any additional insurrection um, or, you know, any any other sort of like backlash or whatever. So I think they're trying to catch the fanatics. And also in my Whoopi Goldberg silly voice for Mr. Hunter, till you do me right, ain't nothing gonna go right by you. And that's it. <laughs> Have a good one. Perfect timing, Daph. Take care. <laughs> Oh, y'all know I love you so color purple. All right, let's try uh, Judgey Justice again. Judgey Justice, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, Kempire? A lot better. Are you outside now? Yeah, I'm outside. Okay. <laughs> what's going on? I, I, I'm going for an afternoon walk. Oh. Um, <laughs> so I think I'm really excited for the Jeannie Mai and Jeezy's, like, you know, all this coming out, the financial documents coming out, because all I can think about is Jeezy's other baby moms probably don't know all the money that he has oh. and they're going to be able to go back to court with those documents because those are signed documents you'll take them back and take them back to court and get more child support mm. so that's what i'm excited for because they about to get into the money city girls up this summer thank you Kim Fire. bye <laughs> oh my god oh y'all are a mess but i love it i love it 
a mess. Thank you to everyone that called in. Shout out to our members. This was a members only live chat. We appreciate your monthly support to become a member. Head on over to teamkempire.com backslash join. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and of course, thank you to our Kings Guards for holding us down on multiple platforms on TikTok, here on YouTube. Shout out to those of you watching on, on Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. We appreciate you guys being here as well. Replay crew, don't forget to let us know what your good news is and your thoughts on all of the hot topics that we covered. Hopefully, I remembered every Everything. Hopefully I remembered everything. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. But before I go, let me say thank you because we had a few super chats. Rahina says, Kempire, you got me cracking it up at work. Oop, I want you to get fired. <laughs> thank you for the super chat. I don't even know what I said. Tyrese, thank you for the super chat. Tyrese says, Dr. Heavenly said that she may have received a call like many others, but actually being invited to marry to medicine is a reach. <laughs> Damn. Cher Cherry, thank you uh, for the super chat. Cherry says, no excuses to be drinking and driving. Get an Uber or cab. Someone could have died. I agree. I mean, they're lucky that that's not what we're reporting on. Rahina, thank you so much for another super chat. Rahina says, are tickets on sale for New York yet? I know the date is, yes. Tickets are now on sale for the Kempire After Dark. All new Kempire, Kempire After Dark live show will be happening here in New York City on June 21st in honor of Pride Month. I'm coming out. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's going to be a special live show here in New York City. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, go get your tickets today. Go get your tickets today. More information will be available in the description after the live. But we posted a link in, in the live chat. If we can post a link again, uh, we will. Matter of fact, let me just do it myself because I have the link right here. I've got the link right here. All right. Hold on. Let me just do this while we're live. Okay. All right. All right. There we go. And let me pin it. Let me pin it. All right, y'all. Thank you all for being here. Thank you guys so much for all the super chats, the likes. If you haven't liked the video already, be sure to like the video. Let's get to a thousand likes before we end today's live. And if you are in New York City or will be in New York City, get your tickets for the Kempire After Dark live show, show. Don't forget, we will also be in Boston on May 30th, Nashville on July 11th, Atlanta on July 12th, and then Seattle on August 30th. 30th. All right. So get your tickets today. If you haven't gotten your tickets, I will see you all later. Don't forget again, our sponsor for today's live show are our friends over at Rose Forever. Use the discount code Kempire40 for $40 off and the discount code Kempire for free worldwide shipping. More information is available in the description. And don't forget, you can take us on the go by downloading the Kempire podcast. So an audio version of this and special episodes will be available there. So subscribe today and give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Thank you all for being here. I will see you all later.
Tong